what you wanna believe, then you can leave it up to me, and I'll give you the key. It's easy. Just keep on hopping, keep on rocking, and don't start stopping. should have done it like i don't know what were you like six months ago but oh you know here we are uh we are all very busy and so that's how it goes but we met at the swiss symposium and it was freaking hilarious because i think the night we flew in we were in the elevator together at the hotel and then the next day we were in every single class together and by the end of the second day we were like oh hi this is my name how are you uh i see you're into all the same stuff as me because there was a million different classes and so then we started chatting and we all hit it off and it was great so um yeah it was that was an awesome experience and yeah i'm hoping yeah. to be able to attend one sometime in the future it sounds like they're working on all that stuff but um yeah so when you went, what was your favorite part of the whole thing? What was your favorite class? Yeah. So, you know, first and foremost, big shout out to Ken Connect. And I met him at the Arnold Education a few years ago. Um, and then just, you know, seeing him come in the previous years and then bringing the Swiss to the U.S., it was a game changer in terms of education for us. Um, I think that this field in general is lacking that me mega. You know, it's really hard to find. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. Uh, right. I, I, you know, we need it. We need to be together. Like you said, you know, we're inspiring each other, meet in the elevator, like, oh, did you see this speaker? Did you see that speaker? You know, and it's mm -hmm. just in the, in the wheels start turning. And before you know it, you know, questions are getting answered or you're learning about things that you didn't know existed to bring back and help your clients. And it just unlocks a whole different section of your mind um as a clinician or a practitioner or a trainer or whoever, whoever you are going there to to just be better mm -hmm. um so yeah you know and and to pick out anything in particular about the swiss um i would say uh my favorite presentation was probably dr lee's presentation because i got picked out of the crowd to actually go up there and do hands-on uh, chiropractic and manipulation type work that i had not uh done before um, probably wouldn't have implemented it into my practice unless that he gave me the confidence in real time uh, to 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 put in these these procedures and with my work. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, you know, I've benefited a lot of people with with his uh, his modalities. So um, him and just countless other people, like you can attest to, it's it's just you 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 have centuries of knowledge and information there at the Swiss. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stu McGill, right? I mean, Stu McGill, wow. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like literally gets a standing ovation at the Swiss um, for his, uh, you know, years of research on spinal injuries and rehab. And um, it's fascinating. And again, just little tips and tricks and tools you can take back that really make a big difference mm -hmm. to help your clients. So that's just a couple highlights for me. I mean, there's just so much Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, and the incredible thing is, um, like you and I were able to connect and I was able to connect with so many other people. And there's so many of these people in this space. And the amazing part about it is it's not just personal trainers. We're talking doctors, chiropractors, surgeons, you name it. They're trying to synergistically bring all of it in together so that people can be treated as a whole instead of all of these different sections. And that's yeah. what I found when I very first got into fitness and started doing this just as a general population person was I was like, hmm, what the heck? This doesn't make sense. You know, nothing lined up. It was like, oh, you got your trainer over here telling you to do this. You got your doctor telling you to do this. You got your friends telling you to do this. You got, and you're all over the place, right? And you're like, you're like, I don't know what to do, right? And then how often yeah. do you even see currently where a trainer 
will have somebody just crushing themselves, right? They'll maybe, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe that trainer is somebody that likes to crush themselves personally, you know, so then they're crushing their clients. Well, how many of these women shouldn't be being crushed? How many of them are already overstressed and have so many things going on? So there's a disconnect. How many people have nutritionists, nutritionists working with them where the doctor is saying, eat less, move more, do this, do that. And then the nutritionist is saying, no, you need to do this. And like, there's another disconnect. And then you, you, so you have all these things. So the inspiring part about that community and this kind of movement that is going on is you have all of these people that are coming together and realizing now, oh, your eyeball is connected to your brain is connected to, you know, like there's all these things that are all synergistic. The right? knee like, bone is connected to the, yeah, bone, you know, yeah. that song. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I could sing it for the rest of, you know, if you guys yeah. want to hear the whole thing, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah. So like, but it's, yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And so I realized that right off the bat and that's what I was like, okay, this is where I need to be different in my approach to coaching people because it's not just fitness. It's not just nutrition. It's, the mindset, it's like everything, right? It's movement. It's, right. it's all the things. And so that's, what's so dang important about what you and I are doing and what they are doing with Swiss, because how many people do you know that are preaching these things? And they have no effing idea what they're talking about. You know, right. they're, they're, they're putting these people on, you know, 900 calorie diets and making them do hit card cardio, like seven days a week. And then Oh yeah, they got the results, right? That, that transformation photo. Great. For how long? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's a huge piece of all of this. I, uh, I've been a big pusher. I, I've been really fortunate with powerhouse gyms to have, we had in-house nutrition. We have in the house, uh, seven, seven nutrition. They're awesome. Paulina Petrovich, uh, she's my girl, mm -hmm. but, uh, a lot of conversations with her from the, from the very beginning. And I said, you know, I mean, I'm a trainer. <laughs> I'm not a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. can, can I do a diet? Sure. Should I do a diet? Probably not, mm -hmm. you know, even with everything I know, even though it's competition prep and my medical license and all this, you know, the stuff, but it, there's something to be said for, you know, hiring the person that's supposed to, that, that specializes in that piece. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like you said, the Swiss is a great networking opportunity for us to meet people to, to send out um, for things that, you know, we don't feel qualified to handle. And it's good to do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's a big problem I see in the training community is trainers overreaching with their scope, mm -hmm. um, and doing diets, doing supplements, doing peptides, hormones, mm -hmm. uh, and other stuff and, and, and really jacking their clients up. And, uh, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wrong. And we owe it to people to, to do a good service to them and just, you know, admit when we've reached uh, the point where we don't, we, we no longer, you know, know how to help them. And it's, it's totally okay to admit that and send them to people who can help them further. You know, think, you're not the end all be all, you're the trainer. Right. And I think that gives you actually a lot of credibility within the health space. I know with me, I have a huge network as well as you. Um, and I see something, if I see something on like lab work, so I personally, I'm a nutritionist and I'm a trainer because I saw early on that I needed to do both. <laughs> I couldn't just yeah. be a trainer. Right. Different, and so, yeah. and then I got even crazier and just continued going down rabbit holes. So, um, actually I'm considering getting my CSCS next. So it's like, okay, I've got problems with education, but that's okay. Uh, anyway, uh, but, um, when you are outside of that, like I had a case today where I, I looked at somebody's labs and I was like, whoa, before we ever even talk to each other, you got to go see the medical practitioner that I work with or a medical practitioner. I would suggest this person, this person, I feel like we would be very aligned that way. When you come back to me, we can work together, make sure that you're reaching your goals. And I think that's right. a really important part of it. Like, and I'm the very first to be like, I have no idea. Let me figure out somebody who does know. So yeah, um, yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. We're very much alike in that respect. I, um, I, I'm a big, you know, faithful person. And I kind of think that things just kind of organically will flow together as long as you don't really fight it too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a big, big problem with that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the hard things are like, ah, I can't do that. Sometimes you guys got to fight through that and see what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, but I started my career path out as a paramedic, uh, working with people that were kind of too far gone and never really been able to make a difference in people's lives and then got really unhealthy myself. Mm -hmm. And through this health transformation, um, I just kind of rolled into the personal training stuff. 
And now I've been able to fuse my old life with my new life with a medical background and um, got my partner, Dr. Max Feinstein, who I consult with um, for our clients in the integrative health clinic. And um, yeah, things just like you said, you know, it just continue with your education. Don't stop learning. Fuse all these things together that you've learned and and just keep expanding and building on it. Never stop learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you alluded a little bit into things. So that was my next place where I was going. Who are you? Number one. Yeah, yeah. Who what am I, do, right? What do you do? And what got you going well, into this space? Yeah, so I'm uh, 42, getting to be 43. Super proud of that because, you know, I'm in the best shape of my life in my 40s. And I, I display that badge of honor very proudly. Uh, because it's taken some massive changes and uh, some serious come to Jesus talks with myself to be where I am today. Um, and like I said, you know, I started my career, I was always an athlete as a child, started my career path out as a paramedic, you know, and uh, to succumb to that lifestyle. I know that if you've seen a lot of EMS workers, they're typically not the healthiest people, um, usually overweight, you know, smokers, very stressed, alcohol, uh, PTSD runs rampant in that field. And so it just gets, it's, it's quite toxic, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Um, and so I gained a whole ton of weight, had some pretty bad on the job injuries. And so um, just dealing with my own depression, I started running. i um, just kind of like, you know, out of nowhere. It was all that I could do is just to go out and run. Um, so that was my start in fitness. Um, and I'm like, I, uh, you know, type a, once I start doing something, like it just becomes neurotic, you know, mm -hmm. I can relate. Like, you know, like you. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, you know, it went from being running around the block to running a marathon, you know, with a year. And then it was like, well, how many marathons can I do? And well, maybe let's just do some ultra marathons too. Um, and so if you know any runners and um, endurance athletes, uh, they tend to be junkies on that only, and they do no strength training. So I got seriously injured running. Uh, I had to have a pretty nasty surgery. Uh, the rehabilitation process from that was not pretty, but it showed me like the new light. The new light was I needed to get into strength training. Um, so I've been in that space now for uh, well over like six years. And picking up the weight was like personally game changing for me. Game changing. I mean, I never thought that I could feel as good as I feel being this type of health. Um, and just do everything that I do at this age. And I don't think I would have continued doing any of this if I had just continued running. Um, my brother said something really profound to me. And he said, you know, with your athleticism, be the complete package. You know, don't just get, I, he goes, I know you love running. That's great. <laughs> you know, but you need to kind of blend it all, right? Mm -hmm. So I went back to school for personal training and I got lucky and I actually took a six month program where half the day we spent in the gym training each other and the other half of the day we were, you know, in the didactic portion in class. Um, and that kind of stuff doesn't exist anymore. Unfortunately, COVID put the kibosh to that. Um, so I don't even know a school that does it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so got really lucky to have that. And then, um, you know, it just from there, things just took off. So coaching runners, doing online training, blah, blah, blah. And then I hooked up with powerhouse gyms right after COVID and uh, started taking in-person clients there at that point. And things just really took off. Powerhouse has been great for me. They built my business in a way that I could never have imagined. You know, I was always kind of afraid of joining forces with the gym and, you know, paying them money <laughs> for rent and all that stuff, you know, but it's been great. I met, you know, everybody from there since then. So the nutritionist that, um, uh, introduced me to supplement companies and um, a doctor that I'm currently partnered with. And now I spend half of my day in person training clients. I do remote coaching as well. And I also am the managing partner for our wellness center and integrative health with Dr. Max Feinstein. So here I am using all of my old stuff into my new stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's great. Yeah, it's been a really great ride for sure. And I know it's not over yet. <laughs> Exactly. Like I, I always feel like that, especially in our space, it's like, what's next? What's coming? Like there's something else. Like, I'm like, oh, I need to learn more about this. But I feel like because of the education that you're giving yourself outside of personal training with things like Swiss and like doing the Arnold and like all of that kind of stuff, right? You are, a, you're giving your, A, you're, you're able to better serve people by sending them in the correct direction if needed. Um, B, you have a better understanding of the whole person. Now, we were talking off camera 
because we've both been on this kick a lot. So um, basically, I do things completely different uh, than I did when I very first started coaching. When I very first started coaching, I was like, here's your plan. Here's what to do. Didn't think of anything outside of that. Just eat this, do this. You're good, right? Doesn't work that way. And God bless my clients that are still with me all this time later. Um, they still pay the same fee. I've never gone up on fees with the people. If I go up on fees, it's not, it doesn't happen to the people that I was already coaching and bless them. They deserve that because they had to deal with me in the young <laughs> years of our coaching career together. <laughs> right, so, right. And they're still here. So I didn't scare them off too terribly bad. <laughs> um, but anyway, we are seeing some trends and that is, Everybody wants to do the fancy thing, but they may be skipping the basics. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I'm just going to go right to like the real hot button topic right now. <laughs> and that is the, you know, Ozempic and semaglutide. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, so we, we sell plenty of it in our clinic. Um, you know, we, we, we don't allow people, we don't at least promote people to use it as a vanity drug and long-term use and things like that, you know, just to, um, manage their crappy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that is not what that peptide is for. Mm -hmm. Um, that is for people who are obese and they need a lifeline, mm -hmm. you know, they need to get that weight off. They need it. They need a starting block. They need some help managing their, you know, hunger and cravings and and modulating the glucose. Um, but but long term use and people who don't really need it, I, I'm just a I'm just not a fan. Mm -hmm. um, and so that leads me down the path of just saying that you know that these peptides, supplements, and all this is not a pass to just not try to correct the things that got you to the place that you're in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the place that you're in is there because of you. Like it was for me when I was a paramedic, I was eating donuts at four o'clock in the morning because they were free mm -hmm. and I was smoking cigarettes and, you know, eating whatever, mm -hmm. never exercising. And that's why I gained 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it wasn't because I was getting old. <laughs> you know, I was, terrible lifestyle mm -hmm. and we didn't have we didn't have uh semaglutide back then mm -hmm. um but that that's the thing you know it, it's it's people are like you know i i, I want to get on this peptide because i'm ready well are you ready to do the hard stuff you know are you ready to structure your diet in a way that benefits you and actually fuels your body and, and fuels your temple um versus just eating whatever eating junk mm -hmm. <laughs> My good buddy at uh, Nutritional Frontiers, Jamie Dorley, has a really good saying, and he says, you know, there's junk and then there's food. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a definitive line between the two things, you know, and mm -hmm. we all, everybody indulges, nobody's perfect, I get it, but that when you really start looking at it that way, it's much easier to to start selecting the things that you should be eating versus what you want to eat. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's first and foremost, nutrition is is number one knowing that you're worth it and making those good decisions, mm -hmm. improving your sleep, you know, mm -hmm. putting the phone down, <laughs> don't, you know, sit there with that all night, you know, and, and scrolling until midnight and then wondering why you can't get up and hit up the gym in the morning. Well, because you need sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just that easy. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. There are some peptides that can give you some great sleep, but unless you make a concerted effort to go to bed earlier and shut down the distractions and that's not going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, and then, move, and then purposeful movement. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another one, you know, I get a lot of balking from people with, because they like, I don't have time to work out. I got kids. I get this. And well, it's all that it's your, their, your excuses. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is that eventually you, you do have to incorporate movement. So why not just try to go for a short walk after you have a meal and like that start there, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be an hour workout. It could be a short walk after a meal. And that's a great start. Mm -hmm. you know, don't overcomplicate that. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's all the free stuff, drink water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, but how many times do you see this happen? All the time. So for example, um, I was recently hired by a former competitor that was using shows as a diet, um, not 
you know, I'm not going to say not for bodybuilding, but it was a diet. Right. Um, and then when the show was done, then the weight came back and then it was another show was used as a diet and it was a repeating process for a while. And then by the time she got to me, things were not pretty. Adrenal function was bad. Hormonal function was bad. All of that kind of stuff. Right. And on the introduction call, when we were deciding whether we were going to work with each other, I said, well, from what I see with your case, we are looking at six months to a year before we can consider really pushing for weight loss. And I, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God, really? No way. Yeah. 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 And I said, I am happy to work with you. I think that we would be very successful together, but you have to give yourself some grace and allow yourself a period of healing, reverse dieting, all of these things. Yeah. Well, like three weeks in, right. I've, gained, I've gained a pound. Like it was like, you know, I've gained a pound. Right. And I'm like, okay. You know, and it just was, it was a constant state of like coming up with reasons like, Oh, I'm feeling like my, I mean, we reduced cardio significantly, just wanted to do 30, couple 30 minute walks a day. Right. And then reduce, reduced, uh, workouts down to less intense stuff. Right. I'm like, let's just hit the basics. We're going to do some 30 minute walks. We're going to do a couple, two workouts a week, actually full body. And we're going to allow a period of healing, but we're going to also allow you to get back into the swing of things because she hadn't been consistently going to the gym. I said, I want to see us hit all these targets. They were pretty basic ones, reasonable. And then we'll consider reevaluating things. Well, none of these targets were hit, right? Um, not going to the gym, which strength training we know is so amazing for your metabolism. It's also let puts you in a less sympathetic dominant nervous state than intense cardio. So sure. we get weeks into things. Um, and she's like, I really need to add some cardio because I just feel like I'm out of shape. When you know, deep down inside, it was like, I think it's going to make me lose weight. Right. So yeah. the push for the push for cardio and like all these things, when the low hanging fruit wasn't being attended to such as sleep and stress and time management and things like that. So, um, we as coaches can help you so much, but being able to manage the basics and make yourself a priority is a huge thing. And I see a problem with that a lot in parents in particular and moms, right? They get the mom guilt sure. going on. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's you hard. Know, and, and to kind of back you up and touch base, I think what, what you mentioned was really important. And that's, you know, you had the, the two different types of, of exercise, right? I mean, there's many different types, but let's just split it up into, you know, people are like, oh, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing cardio. Great. Okay. <laughs> and then weightlifting. Well, putting that muscle on your body is the goal. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the stuff that is going to burn the calories outside of the gym. And that's what I try to hammer into my clients. That is the important thing. Mm -hmm. The calories that you burn while you're doing cardio is just then. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not any other time, you know, mm -hmm. and, and like you said, it's putting you in more of a sympathetic tone, which is stressful. And the majority of people, good Lord, especially after COVID, are just super stressed out. I mean, we're seeing like cortisol levels in, in that that are just sky high or really low, super mm -hmm. low too. Yeah. Um, you know, from from that, you know, doing excessive cardio or excessively working out or just stress at work or whatever. But so the point is, is that, you know, that in the moment cardio is only good for that in the moment and maybe not even that. But where mm -hmm. the gold is, is putting that lean mass on your body so it demands to be fed outside of the gym and then that's where you get the changes from. But um, another thing that we didn't talk about is you need to have patience mm -hmm. <laughs> for that tissue to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, 20, 21 days of, it takes for positive adaptation of muscle tissue. Um, and so, you know, it, it, these are seeds that you have to sow to see this garden grow eventually. And it's worth it to do it. Mm -hmm. But people don't have the patience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, and I will reverse because we'll take it a little bit of a step further in this topic. But um, so <clears throat> I believe that there is a place for some of these GLP ones like semiglutide, Wegovio, Zempic, all of those. I do believe there's a place just like you. So people hopefully don't get it wrong that I'm I am dogmatic against it. I am absolutely not. They're, oh, they're, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. And, but however, um, 
I'm seeing it used improperly. And I actually just got done with a conversation with a cardiologist that I work closely with. He was like, and he's very well-educated man. I highly respect him. And he was like, well, I do use it in my clinic and I use it in, in my practice. He's like, but what they are seeing in the research is it is causing large amounts of sarcopenia, which in the end sure. is yeah. making people there it's 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 not contributing to the health of a person's metabolism right yeah right so so and that kind of goes back to that same foundation such as cardio right cardio is great for certain things however mm-hmm. our main goal is to have more tissue more tissue burns more calories it makes it so that we are more insulin sensitive it is very very important so if these people are jumping straight to the shot and they are right. not actually making sure that they're still getting enough protein in and high quality nutrients and strength training and doing these things, they actually get done on the shot. And I see them gain and everybody else I know sees them gain a ton. Yeah. Because now they went from their like BMR, we'll just throw random numbers out here because we don't know who we're talking about here, but say your BMR was like 1400 and now it's down to a thousand. That's 400 calories less a day that you are burning because of muscle loss. So- There's a lot of, of things that are downsides. And so, and you're seeing it, I'm sure like now in the bodybuilding space, people are using it. Right. And, and you're seeing like women walking into these clinics that don't need to lose weight. They probably just need to increase their muscle mass, you know, to tone up, um, increase their muscle mass, change their nutrition, maybe work on their stress and lifestyle things. Instead, these women that actually really don't need to lose weight, they just need to change all these other things are being prescribed this medication that is, yeah. is is causing a downfall as far as metabolic rebound once they decide they don't want to pay for it and they don't want to continue on with it. Right. Yeah, I'm seeing the the biggest um um you know muscle loss with our clients like starting at about the five, six month mark of use. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, I just I attribute that to the because the appetite suppression is mega. Mm -hmm. that's that's besides the modulation of glucose that's that's how that works Mm -hmm. and eventually it shrinks the stomach and it also you know you avoid a lot of foods that you probably you know would would rather have had you know if you're not on the peptide and so um i really try to hammer in on my clients that we we will prescribe for is that in the beginning before the peptide starts to kick up you need to start putting those good nutritional practices in you know, and if that includes just, you know, bulking up a couple good shakes a day that are like four, 600 calories, because mm-hmm. once you get four and five and six months into the shot, that's probably about the only thing you're going to tolerate because sitting mm-hmm. down and eating a meal will be at the last thing on your list because the mm-hmm. appetite suppression is so significant. I don't personally know anybody in the bodybuilding community using that peptide, but I just... <laughs> you know, thinking about my competition prep and some of the people I, I couldn't imagine, you know, mm-hmm. it, the, we, you lose it, so much muscle anyway, mm-hmm. getting that, you know, stage lean that I, I just don't really see that being, you know, good use, unless you're just using it to cheat your crappy diet that you're cheating on your diet, basically. A lot of it, I think is the appetite suppression yeah. that people are chasing. So awful. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. Anyway, so it's an interesting subject that's out there now. I do definitely think it has its place, but again, yeah, um, yeah, it's very like morbidly obese people, people that are, have right. like, significant cravings and things like that. It can be yeah. definitely a tool to help them learn new lifestyle practices. However, I don't know that it should be a crutch that should be used long term. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and I mean, and again, it, you know, it's. It's not had a whole long track record either. So, Mm -hmm. you know, even though like, again, we're prescribing, um, but I still say that with some caution as far as like long-term use, and we don't really know what long-term side effects are going to be from long-term use either. So, you know, if you're one of those people, you should probably kind (laughs) of take a good look Mm -hmm. at your whole situation and take heed to the warning and, and start doing the things that you need to do to get your lifestyle on track so you can manage a healthy Mm -hmm. weight outside of the peptide. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So you've been coaching for quite some time now, and we were kind of talking off camera about some of the things that you see that that are some low hanging fruit. We talked about nutrition. We talked about some things like that. Let's talk about things from the standpoint of being coachable. What can yeah. you what can you weigh uh, in on that? 
why do people hire a coach if you're not going to be honest with the coach? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I always tell people right off the rip, you know, I, I want you to go home and think about or, you know, take some time and think about if you think you're going to work for me. Mm -hmm. Do you think that I'm going to be the person that you're going to trust to come to and say, you know, I didn't actually do any of that, <laughs> you know, or I didn't follow my diet this week or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just say I'm not going to go into it, but I have some personal things going on and it's probably preventing me from getting to the gym or whatever, you know, like, mm -hmm. I mean, just stop, just drop your ego, drop your shame, drop the guilt, drop all of that and trust the person that you're dropping all this money with to, to coach you, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's ridiculous. A lot of methods with coaching. Uh, you know, if you're, you know, in the strength training, you know, if you're using progressive overload or however you're doing it um, and the nutrition, this is science, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're not making gains after a period of time and your coach is looking at things and the numbers aren't adding up, I mean, it, it's not because it's a poor plan. It's poor execution a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, and if the person's not being honest with the coach, the coach is looking, at least I do, I look and I'm like, what can I be doing to, to to be better here. Mm -hmm. What is faulted about my plan? Why this person's not getting stronger? Mm -hmm. um, and then it and then it circles back to well, there's a non-compliance issue. Mm -hmm. so then how do you reach people? Mm -hmm. You know how 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 do you reach people? Um, and that is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And my biggest advice is is like when you're talking to your clients is like just ask them right on the, off the rip. What's your why? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the old school, like this was a big, big buzzword a few years ago. You know, why are you here? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? What is the thing that really scares you about your life that you're wanting to make these significant life changes for? Mm -hmm. Or if you put it into context of an athlete, bodybuilder, what have you, why do you want to be the best that you want to be? You mm -hmm. know, are mm -hmm. you truly enjoying the work that you're putting in? You know, like, I mean, we're, what is the thing that's getting you to the gym? Figure that out and don't let go of that, especially mm -hmm. on the days when it's five and six in the morning. You don't want to you don't want to drag your ass out of bed. You need to hold on to that thing that's going to get you there mm -hmm. for lifestyle clients. Oftentimes it's like, yeah, I, well, I want to age with grace. I want to feel good. I, I want to keep up with my grandkids. You know, I want to be here for my spouse. I, you know, whatever that is, I mean, mm -hmm. it just figure it out and, and run with that. Mm -hmm. And I feel that those types of whys are the ones that get people continuing to come back and try and work and develop consistency and stuff. Cause I have found that the clients that are like, Oh, I want to look good for summertime are not the ones typically that are executing the plan. Because yeah. the why is not strong enough. Yeah. It's not yeah. personal enough. Right. And so it seems like more of something to them, like they don't know it, but underlying, it's more of something that is something that others you think expect of you, right? And so the yeah. why is not strong. However, if you're like, no, I want to be able to, you know, crawl on, I got a good story about this is what I'm saying. I want to be able to crawl on the floor with my kids and I want to be able to go for hikes and I want to be able to do all of these things. The why becomes much more meaningful. Sure. Sure. You know, and I, and I had a guy literally that came to me, it was probably last year. It all blends in sometimes. Uh, it was funny. I was on a, a podcast with Lauren Conlon, like a couple months ago or a month ago. And she was like, I was like, Oh, well, I think I talked to you last year. She's like, it was four years ago. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, whoops. Uh, my bad. Uh, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. But uh, <sighs> anyway, uh, this guy, he was like, I cannot thank you enough. He's like, I used to not even be able to get on the floor and play with my kids. And now we can get on the floor. We can run around. We can do all of these things that I was never able to do before. And I didn't realize it until I had it back. So thank yeah. you. And it's those little things that are extremely meaningful and more motivating for people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of joke and I say that like, you know, I mean, I've, I feel like I've done a lot of great things with clients as far as like, you know, getting them to improve their life, you know, athletic performances went up competitions, all this, you know, like cool stuff, but uh, some of the most meaningful work for me is those clients that they're like, you know, I, I can get on and off the toilet without pain. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, uh, I, I, I feel like I can reach my foot and put my sock on, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like, <laughs> and why it's so profound is, is because if you've been that person that suffers with back pain so bad that you can't even put your own sock on, mm -hmm. or if you've been that person that 
your living situation is jeopardized because literally you're not safe getting on and off the toilet. And then suddenly you gain the strength to do that again. Like it's, that's a big deal. That's mm -hmm. a real big deal, mm -hmm. you know, and um, that, that makes my job super meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. So long, I, yeah. Live, long live the strength to get on and off the toilet. <laughs> well, and that's an incredible <laughs> thing too. I've got, um, many clients and I'm sure you do too that are 60 plus right I've got a lady that works out with me yeah. that's 74 you know like and she dead she dead she can deadlift a 40 pound kettlebell for like 15 reps and with perfect technique and she's like my daughter saw my muscle the other day <laughs> and she's like you know my only regret and I hear this from all of the older ladies my only regret is I didn't do this 30 years ago Amen. and you don't yeah. hear the 40 year old women saying that they go, they might stick to it for a while for the most part. And then some of them, they ebb and flow. Right. But, yeah. then, but, but I'm telling you what, those 60 plus women, they are religious about coming for their workouts because they know what it's like to be in the in between. And they are yeah. now like, listen, my friends can't do this, but look what I can do. You know, when they come right. in, they're like, I got my full size suitcase out of the attic without asking my husband and they're 70 years old. You're like, yeah, this is good yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and the and those those women in that that particular part of their lives, they know how that they felt through premenopause, po you know, and and menopause and postmenopause mm -hmm. with not being active. Mm -hmm. And then they then and then suddenly they feel their body light up and 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 just their energy change you know, their, their willingness to go out with friends, do things, the self-confidence, you know, they feel all these things being restored about them. And they do that. They think to themselves, you know, like, dang it, if I had done this pre-menopause, menopause, post-menopause, post that probably would have, you know, maybe I would have saved my marriage. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would, you know what I mean? Because it's just the hormone wacky tobacco train that most women ride through those times. It's a, uh, it's, it's a life killer. You know, mm -hmm. if kids get estranged, you mm -hmm. know, things happen because you're just moody and, and crazy. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing to combat that, that crazy, wacky, tobacco up and down is working out. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it is, it's the best, in my opinion, natural antidepressant that you can, you can take or do. Mm -hmm. Actually, also, you're, you're right. They all realize it in their 60s. They say that. They say that the, the, the only thing I regret is I didn't come sooner. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it didn't start sooner. Well, and I think you probably saw my rant the other day about that, like the behavioral health analysis that they're doing and the push for SSRIs. And I actually have somebody coming on the podcast here, maybe at the end of the month, to talk about polypharmacology and what some of these things, when they are being stacked with each other, are permanently doing to the brain. That's a whole nother thing. But, um, how many people, when they're doing these assessments, they're like, oh, I mean, I got, it got asked to me yesterday because I went to that appointment, which was the biggest waste of my time ever in my whole life. But I went to that appointment and um, she was like, well, you didn't fill out, fill this form out. Are you feeling okay? Do you have any depression? Do you need any help for that? And I was like, when was the last time they said, okay, maybe instead of an SSRI, okay, what's your sleep look like? Yeah. What's your life stress look like? What's your nutrition look like? Because so many, what do you work out? Because right. that's a, amazing for mental health, endorphin right. release, all of that kind of stuff, right? So why aren't we taking the baby steps first before we're jumping into these uh, medications that can permanently alter your brain chem chemistry? I'll be, I'll be mean and just say we're a weak-minded, uh, uh, give me a pill society. I hate that. Mm -hmm. I hope we change it. We mm -hmm. need to change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, um, the Andrew Huberman podcast. I can't remember who the person he had on there was, but they were talking about that part of the brain, the anterior mid cingulate cortex. I might have that right. But it's a part of the brain that's responsible for like your willpower and drive. Mm -hmm. And physical activity actually grows this part of the brain. And they know that longevity in life and that part of the brain being larger are directly correlated with each other. Mm -hmm. So in some, you know, do hard shit in your life mm -hmm. and you'll live longer, mm -hmm. you know, take that step mm -hmm. and, and, and being disciplined enough to disciplined and love yourself enough 
to take care of your temple, go and exercise, feed yourself appropriately, all that. Like it's, it's, that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a trained behavior for sure. I mean, how many yeah. people make an excuse for why they can't do something instead of how they can. And it becomes yeah. a narrative, right? You see this, pe people do this with food really frequently. They're like, well, I worked out so good all week, or I did so good on my diet all week. I'm going to eat pizza all weekend, or I'm going to have a bunch of beer, or I'm going to do this or that. Oh. And then, you know, that's just one rock falling in the whole avalanche, right? right. Because right. then the next thing you know, they're like, oh, well, I did that yesterday. So I think I'll do it today. And yeah. then it yeah. begins to pile up because your mental fortitude becomes weaker and weaker. And that was like, a huge part when I started my journey, I was 200 pounds and I was fat and I was very, very active and fat. Um, and the thing that was missing was I was trying to take the easy way out every time that I did it. You know, I would do these thousand calorie diets for a month and I would hardly see any kind of results. And then I would be like, ah, eh, well, it didn't work for me. I'll just keep being normal, you know, uh, you know, right. and and right. I didn't understand nutrition. I didn't understand all of these things. And when I learned all that, it was the game changer, but it really was me looking in the mirror and being like, okay, let's get real here. There's no more fuckery. Like, this is what we're doing. Yeah. The only person that's going to get it there is you. You can't talk yourself out of it. It is easier for us to take the easy road. So of course we're going to make excuses. Oh, I'm a little bit tired. So I'm not going to go today or right. this is what's going on. You know, I mean, we have to learn to combat that and shut that excuse making down. But the more we allow for it to happen, the easier it is for it to happen. Same sure. goes with the positive direction. The more you shut that down, the easier it is for you to shut that down. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, it's like, you know, it's sharpening iron, right? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, every, every time you strike, it's going to get sharper, you know, and it's that, that consistency over time is what's going to get you results. Mm -hmm. And I think you brought a really good point about, you know, let's say that we had the weekend and we had pizza and beer. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Get back on the train, you know, mm -hmm. stop feeling sorry for yourself or whatever the problem is. Mm -hmm. You know, you had a weak moment or mm -hmm. you had, you know, a party with the family or whatever, you know, and you had some pizza and you had some beer, you know, did you have a good time? Great. So let's get on the horn the next day, mm -hmm. get your walk in, get your workout on, drink your water. You know, your first meal is going to be a good one, maybe fast a little bit, you know, and, and get back on it mm -hmm. instead of like just throwing all hell to the wind and, <laughs> oh, well, screw it. You know, I had a few off plan meals and now I'm just going to, you know, derail everything in life. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's just not, it's not the way to do it. You will fail. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. I, that's the way life is. Um, gosh, you know, I've learned nothing from the wins, but I've learned everything from all my failures, mm -hmm. you know, and you, if they say the cliche, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Well, it's true. Mm -hmm. And when you fail, don't beat yourself up about it, you know, be your mm -hmm. biggest cheerleader and say, come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. You had some goals in mind. Let's get back on that horse and, and do the thing mm -hmm. instead of, instead of you know, mentally breaking yourself down and just allowing yourself to go back into those old patterns that aren't serving you well. Absolutely. Right? I love yeah. it. Well, so yeah. if there's so one there's thing that you've learned in this whole process and there was one piece of advice you could give people, and one, I know this is hard because there's, mul there's multifaceted, um, one piece of advice that you think is instrumental in somebody's health journey what would it be? I, it doesn't matter if you hire the most amazing coach uh, or if you have the best spouse or if your kids are angels and all the stars are aligned. Mm -hmm. If that you're not in your own head, you know, cheering yourself on that you, you don't have a good platform to spring off of. Like you, you have to be your biggest fan. You know, you're really that, that, that positive self-talk that, that, that inner dialogue in your brain is everything, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's happening all day long. Mm -hmm. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you know, you woke up late, you're like, oh shit, I don't have time to get my crap together for lunch and all that. I'm just going to buy lunch. Hell no. Take the extra three minutes. Well, I guess mm -hmm. you're going to be three minutes late. Yeah. yeah. You know, make the decisions. Mm -hmm. Don't allow yourself out of it. That's, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Just be your biggest cheerleader. Remind yourself why you want to do what you want to do and you will be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, beat yourself down though. 
-hmm. or allow and, other, uh, other people's opinions and, and, and whatnot, you know, that's mm -hmm. not going to go well, you know, find, and, find the path and, yourself and do it. You find that that's a common thing now is the negative headspace, right? Like the, oh, I didn't Huge. succeed, so I'm just going to fail or, you know, Huge. people talking poorly about their body or their health or their I mean, labels, that's a huge thing I've found lately. Like somebody gets labeled weight loss resistant or with Hashimoto's or whatever it might be. And they, they, they're like, oh, I have Hashimoto's. I'm just going to be overweight. And that's how it is. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And so you can either embrace what your label is, or you can turn around and be like, no, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going for that. We're going to prove everybody wrong. And I think yeah. that's a much better approach than this constant telling your system that something is broken because it's not right yeah um, yeah the autoimmune the autoimmune disease is, is huge i i personally have hashimotos mm -hmm. um and it's not it's not me i'm not hashimotos mm -hmm. uh and in our clinic we're dealing with a lot of people with cancer you know active mm -hmm. cancer and that's scary mm -hmm. I, I i don't know what that's like to get that cancer diagnosis but i'm dealing with a lot of people that do mm -hmm. and i see the people that do the best it's not because they're receiving amazing IV therapy. Well, I mean, I'm sure it helps, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, and, they, and they're working on their lifestyle and their diet and all that other stuff, but they're working on that mental part of it, you know, and they, they, it's not about beating the cancer. It's that we can live with it. And it's kind mm -hmm. of an emotional being and we're not feeding it with stress and, and that kind of stuff. Those, those clients are doing very well with their cancer, mm -hmm. you know, and the people who are like, oh shit, I'm going to die. You know, I mean, I have cancer, you know, and they're freaking out and they're feeding it with stress and all that. I mean, the, the deterioration is rapid. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that we have a lot of decisions right here to be made about how we're going to be with our health, regardless of what your diagnosis is. Mm -hmm. And another real quick point too, is uh, people freaking out about labs. Mm -hmm. You know, how did you feel when you got the labs done? Well, I felt pretty good. Well, I mean, there's just a couple of things that are a little out of whack, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And not really out of range, or maybe something's high, whatever, let's work on it, but stay right. with the moment right. here, you know? When I was, uh, as a paramedic, they told us, they said, you know, treat your patient, not the monitor. It's the same, you know? So treat your clients and how they are, not, you know, exactly what these labs are telling you necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and the same for your client's perspective about stuff. You know, let's use these labs as a tool and as a guide to narrow down where we need to target therapies, mm -hmm. but not as like, uh, just, oh God, you know, it, <laughs> I see that. it's like, you know, we're not, you're, you're good. You're not, yeah. Yeah. You felt fine when you got your labs done. Now suddenly you're freaking out. You'll be okay. Yeah, no, I see that all the time. I see, um, people will have their labs run and they'll, They'll be like, oh my God, I'm panicking. I see this is off. And I'm like, no, I said, this is just knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge helps us move in the correct direction. There's nothing yeah. to panic about. Had you have not known this, you would have carried on in the same way that you were carrying on. So now we have knowledge. Now we have power. Now we can move towards the correct direction that we need to move towards. There's no reason to right. panic. This is a tool for our toolkit. Right. You know? right, right. Or things not improving, you know, with a rapid pace mm -hmm. I'm like well I mean how long were you sick for and how long did you have these you know biomarkers that are telling us that you're sick well 15 20 years well man it's going to take more than two weeks for you to feel better mm -hmm. you know and and a lot a big part of what we're doing now it's like detox 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 well guess what you're going to feel like shit before you feel better yeah <laughs> you know i mean and you're gonna have some rebounding with with things during your detox process and during the process of getting healthier the body's gonna fight that at times and you're not gonna really feel your best you know so you kind of got to accept that it's you're got to ebb and flow with improving your health mm -hmm. it's not just going to be this steady uh uptick of you know you're just in amazing fit shape you know you're there's going to be in the strength, you're going to have injuries or down days or days you don't, you know, feel exceptionally your best. And it, it's the same for when you're just trying to get it right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Patience. Yeah. <laughs> well, if people want to find you, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, they can email me at coachbillynicole at gmail. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're at fusionwellness.com uh, as our website. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you could email me or, uh, hit up fusion wellness and I'll be the person answering the questions there too. 
But uh, yeah, I really enjoy getting connected with people and doing these online consults to help them, especially with the supplements or, you know, what physicians they need to see or what steps need to be next and helping them kind of bridge that gap, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and just targeting, you know, where they go next. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's good work. So. Well, I will put all that in the show notes that people can reach out to you if they want to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, social media or anything like that that they can visit. Yeah, I have an Instagram, but you know what, to be honest with you, like I'm, I'm getting kind of, <laughs> that's a whole nother podcast we could do. <laughs> I, I am, uh, I'm retracting a bit from socials. You know, I'm all into this like dopamine depletion thing and I, I'm really, you know, and so I'm in front of clients all day long and then I'm working on the computer a lot after clients. And then, so to, maintain the social media profile thing for what I don't know what the return really is on all that mm -hmm. it's it's not so I I have a a personal page mm -hmm. um coach Billy Nicole that people can see on Instagram and you'll see pretty much my journey through fitness and to what I'm doing now mm -hmm. but it's you know as far as professional there's really not a lot of information on there it's just a personal page that's a whole so, uh <laughs> that's a whole funny journey it with myself as well I actually have a work phone number and a personal phone number now because I was tired of working at all hours of the day and night and weekends. And um, my social media is actually on my work phone and my work phone does not get turned on before 6.30 in the morning. It does not get tur turned on after 6 p.m. And nice. it does not get turned on on the weekends or during any family or social events. So people may have seen a shift in my social media because I no longer am on there all the time. So yeah, um, it's been very healthy for me and my family, I would say. Oh, for sure. That the boundaries with that is huge. I mean, that's, I, I really think that it's the blame for a lot of people's adrenal fatigue and the cortisol issues and stuff is just social media in general, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. constant, you know, pinging of notifications and information. And I, it's a lot more impactful than a lot of people are, are noticing, um, but mm -hmm. I, I'm taking notice and obviously you are too. Putting up those healthy boundaries is, is huge. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I, I don't know, you know, how much more I'm going to be growing on the socials. Yeah, <laughs> I fully understand. And I really don't care on my own personal one anymore. I'm just like, whatever, I will find people or they will find me if it's meant to be. If not, then I will. For sure. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like at the Swiss, we'll find you at the Swiss. Exactly. Well, it was so awesome chatting with you and reconnecting you with you. And I am excited. Maybe we'll have to do it again and jump on that social media yeah. notation. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely do. Oh my gosh, that's a whole, whole, like, it's crazy. That is a whole rabbit hole for sure. Well, it has been a pleasure. Awesome.